I was in second grade when I heard somewhere that every cigarette smoked takes seven minutes off your life. From that moment, my mission was clear. I would set to work saving my mother's life, seven minutes at a time. <laughs> Figuring she'd notice if her purse had been messed with, I started with the 10-pack cartons she kept stacked on a shelf beside her bed. Each sleek silver box had Benson and Hedges menthol 100s written in fancy black letters. I slipped a pack from an already open carton and hid it beneath my t-shirt until I could deliver it to the kitchen trash can. 20 cigarettes, gone. Though I didn't know how to multiply seven by 20, I could sense that I'd just given her back like tons of time. <laughs> so once a day, I'd disappear another pack, which was just enough to feel good about the extra time I'd banked for her, but not so much that a carton seemed noticeably bare at any one time. But in spite of my efforts, I began seeing cigarettes everywhere, it seemed, dangling between her fingers out the car window, cinched between her teeth as she fastened hot rollers in her hair, her eyes squinting at the smoke trailing up, poised on the kitchen windowsill, half smoked, as she washed dishes. And the ashtrays seemed to topple with the white butts encircled with brick-colored lipstick. Those were the ones I hated most. Their ghostly little bodies all used up and bent, heads mashed dark and then abandoned on top of the heap. Counterintuitive as it was, I moved from throwing away whole packs to stealing individual cigarettes. It slowed my progress in terms of quantity, but the quality of my destruction made up for that. Now I steadied my hand as I tugged a single cigarette from its pack and carefully considered how I would do it in. Sometimes I'd take one into the yard, rub it between my flattened palms, the way one might rub a stick to make fire, then kick dirt over the evidence. Other times I'd hold one between my index finger and thumb and roll it back and forth until its thin skin tore and all the brown leaves tumbled out. Or I might drip water onto one and watch up close as the paper darkened and split. Then I'd pry open the filter to make the cottony innards bloom. One time, I took a kitchen knife to one and severed it like a magician sawing a little woman in half. <laughs> of course, my mother caught on if she hadn't known all along. I'd gotten sloppy, and one day she took me by the arm to her toilet to show me the tobacco leaves floating there. They're gonna make you die, I informed her. After that, I stopped being covert about my stealing. Instead, I brazenly grabbed a lit cigarette from the lip of an ashtray and rubbed it out while she watched. I dug through her purse while she sat across the table sipping coffee. Then, with the pack in hand, I marched out back and flung it into the pool. When I returned, she stopped me at the door, more tired than pissed. Stop taking my cigarettes, she said. My chest tightened. Stop smoking them, I replied. You have no right to take what's mine, she said, glaring at me for a moment, then walked away. This time I followed her, ran past her, back upstairs and into her bedroom where I waited. When she reached the doorway, I grabbed a whole carton from the shelf, tucked it like a football, and pushed past her again down to the kitchen, then stood there dumbly. When she reached the kitchen, I blew past her again, back upstairs to her room. Clearly, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> I don't know where I thought I would go. But when I think about it now, 
I remember half smiling at the weird exhilaration of our game of chase. <laughs> at a loss for where else to run, I threw myself face down on her bed, crushing the carton beneath my chest. I panted into her comforter, catching my breath. Finally, I felt the air shift as she moved across the room. I felt the mattress bow slightly as she climbed on the bed. She lay herself gently over me and held me tight. She whispered, if you throw those away, I'll just get more. I turned my reddened face to the side. Why? Now I was starting to cry. It's so bad for you. You have to stop. She stated simply, I don't want to. Her words were sincere and honest, which made them all the more heartbreaking. I loosened my grip on the box and she slid it out from under me and slowly backed up off the bed and walked out. Into the room, which was now filled with her absence, I said, but you have no right to take away what's mine. 